Hello, I'm Dr. Basil Constantine from the ACU Online Writing Center, and today we have a very special treat for you. Our webinar, Writing an Argumentative Essay, is not just a normal webinar about how to do different types of writing. It's a special Valentine's Day themed webinar. So today we're going to be looking at how to write a convincing essay, how to argue a point through different forms, and we're going to be talking, as befits the day, about love. So with that in mind, we're going to rush through some of our normal announcements. Very briefly, if you are a student in just about any program at ACU Online, ACU Dallas, we're more than happy to work with you at the Writing Center. You can email us short questions, you can make an appointment for more detailed feedback, you can watch webinars such as this, and make use of various other services. You can sign up for an appointment by going to my.acu.edu. Under the resources drop down, find the Online Writing Center, and we've got a video walkthrough, step-by-step -step instructions, all the things you need to sign up for an appointment. You can sign up for appointments where you talk with someone in real time, either via phone or Zoom. You can sign up for an appointment where you just upload your paper and request feedback on anything special that you are very interested in. And that's all that there is to that. If you are looking on our webinars page, you can find that we've sorted things by program and also, for example, all the undergraduate webinars you can find listed in one place. So if you're wondering if a, we have something for a class you're considering taking, you can take a peek there. And we have a course paper template you'll see me showing in a bit. We have a YouTube channel for convenient viewing on the go. And we have a blog. With that, let's look at our plans for today. So we're going to look briefly at the four classical types of rhetoric. You may or may not have encountered these earlier in your studies. The four classical types of rhetoric are ways of categorizing arguments that were recognized all the way back in classical Greece. And one of the wonderful things about these is that they're still really great ways of understanding not only the arguments you are making, but how other people are arguing and what is important for them and what an appropriate response is. We'll also look at the no tears plan for paragraph writing, another way of structuring your argument. We're going to look at a specific assignment from Kino 360 about creating a writing sample of an argumentative essay. And then we'll finish with talking about how to put that all together, how to illustrate these in practice. And that's where we're really going to drill down on the Valentine's Day theme. So first, what do I mean by the four classical types of rhetoric? Well, the first one is called ethos. Ethos is really a way of describing how the world is, or how you propose that the world is. And world can be big or small. It could be within an organization. It could be something as large as religion and divinity. Logos. Logos is a way of structuring your argument as with reasoning, with logic. So, oh, because of this, that. Therefore, you should. Pathos. Pathos is an argument that is based primarily on emotion, on feelings. Kairos is an argument that is based primarily on timing. Let's go back through those again. So ethos is an argument that is founded on beliefs, principles, or statements about how the world is or how it works. You say, this is right, this is wrong. That is an ethos statement. Now, logos, on the other hand, is about cause and effect this because of that, or if you value this, you should do this, or you need this, therefore you should buy this other thing, or this will make you feel better, you want to feel better, so you should do this. Logos. Pathos is an argument that's founded on emotion. So anyone who says, <clears throat> if you love me, you should, that is not because it has that if part, but because it has the appeal to love, that the biggest thing should be this feeling, this affection, this emotion, that's what makes it a pathos argument. Now, kairos is something that is founded on timeliness. Now, if we go to a um, much quoted and probably overused movie line, come with me if you want to live, which appeared in the first Terminator movie, and I think everyone since then in some shape or form, uh, that is something that the most compelling part of the argument is timeliness. Uh, 
something bad will happen if you don't do this. We should leave the house now because it is on fire. <laughs> and you know, if the, the argument was, well, we should leave the house because you are hungry eh, right now. Okay, that could be a bit of Logos, could be a bit of Kairos. But if it's, uh, you should we should leave the house now because you're hungry and you get angry if you go more than 30 minutes without... Well, you can see where we're going there. That's basing it on Kairos. All right, so we're going to talk about the No Tears plan, and I'm going to give you more slides than we're going to talk through, because it is Valentine's Day, and I'm sure there are other things you'd like to do as well. But we have a couple webinars that go into this model and the underpinnings of using analysis and synthesis to create stronger arguments. We go through this in several webinars, of which I've linked to here. And the No Tears plan, in a nutshell, is memnonic for checking to see if you made a strong, let's say sophisticated argument. One that starts with a topic sentence that states what you're writing about in the paragraph, what the claim is that you are trying to convince the reader of, evidence or argumentation to support the claim in your topic, you know, give me a reason to believe you, analysis where you discuss the evidence and how it connects to your topic, repeat the evidence and analyze it as necessary. So some arguments you'll need more evidence, some you'll need less. Uh, in this Valentine's Day context, eh, if you've messed up, you probably want to have a bit more evidence about why you're going to deserve forgiveness. Or <laughs> if you're contrarily telling someone why you're not taking them back, then you might give a lot of evidence about how they have not been great. Synthesis was when you talk about what these mean together, what new meanings have we derived from looking at all this and the conclusion is just what it sounds like when you wrap it up or or take us to the next point which could be a following paragraph where you extend the argument or it could be something where you talk about well what happens next now analysis and synthesis again we have webinars that delve into this but in a nutshell the difference between analysis and synthesis when you use them specifically analysis is more on the interpretation of what has been said or written. Synthesis is when you create new meaning from it. So a lot of analysis could be context. Now, if you said, oh, you called me five times, is five times a little or a lot? I don't know. <laughs> but if your argument said, you called me five times, comma, which is more than you called me in all of last month, that is giving some context for interpreting it. So that is analysis. Now, if I said you called me five times, which makes me think that you are desperate. <laughs> okay. Where is the new meaning there? Well, a little bit for the feeling of desperate. But if it's you called me five times, which makes me feel desperate and I'm not interested in you anymore. Ah, we have new meaning. <laughs> so... Analysis and synthesis are very important, but they are not quite synonymous when we use them in this specific capacity. They're also a way of guiding the reader through your arguments so they understand what you're telling them, what kinds of things you're telling them now. Now, if you're writing in APA style, as in almost all of our ACU Dallas, ACU online programs, you may be familiar with other writing styles like say Chicago manual of style that don't necessarily require that you have analysis and synthesis for everything or explicit analysis and synthesis. But APA style, in part from the desire to communicate unambiguously, emphasizes that you write out your reasoning, write out your argument, that you show your evidence. So we're going to skip past these slides, which you can refer to later and go right to looking at the example assignment. So this is coming from the Leadership and Management for Health Promotion class. And you, you can see from the instructions that it starts with a preamble that tells us something about what this assignment is for. So it says, student writing samples are collected from these courses as a measurement of the university's goal to graduate students who are able to read reason, and successfully write a paper regarding a current debatable issue in their future profession. Now, you might see why I've chosen this assignment, because a debatable issue, if you've ever been in a position romantically where someone is debating 
uh, the future, the relationship. This is generally an uncomfortable place that you want to get out of, either going to a more secure thing or getting out of the relationship. Your mileage may vary. But it's a great foundation for illustrating the principles here. Now we see the instructions continue. All right, you write an argumentative paper which you describe at least six profit centers common in fitness, sport, and recreation. Make an argument for which profit centers are the best to offer at one of the following. And defend your argument with sound reasoning based on business practices such as you have learned during this course in your life experience. You're not required to use outside resources. Okay, great. Aside from those presented in the, this course. And you should start with the title page following a particular format. Uh, in this case, without your name, without your course number, and without your instructor's information. So this is a change, what we call a house rule, from APA style. So just make sure that you do that. And uh, let's look at how this is being graded. So we see there's a strong emphasis. Is there the thesis, the central idea or argument? Is it stated clearly and is it fully supported throughout the paper? Do you have well-structured paragraphs that include supporting details? Well, if we were to go back to the no tears plan, that gives you a very clear structure, including a model, a checklist to see if you have supporting details, whether that's evidence or argumentation, analysis or synthesis. Now, there's some other things that you're being graded on here. We see that, oh, about 16% of the credit goes for stylistic control and expressing ideas with precision through varied sentence structure. So you want to make sure that your sentences are of appropriate length. If you are uh, giving short points of evidence, that's probably not something you want to do throughout. Uh, give us some analysis. Give us some synthesis. You know, Show us what this means and group similar things together. So if you've got three different sentences that are all giving information with the same thing, yeah, see if they might be combined together to make a list, because a list has its own value, especially when you're talking about good or bad things. You generally want to show an overabundance. Now, there is uh, the general language use. Is this good grammar? Is it spell-checked? Okay, that's about 16% of the points. And then for the specific topic, did you describe at least six profit centers? And then the last five points you can see is, did you do the cover page the way they wanted? Is it meeting AP formatting? Is it three to four pages? That's roughly three to four double spaced pages of content, 750 to 1,000 words. And you have citations and a reference page if they're outside sources that you're using. Okay, with that said, we are going to diverge from this because rather than write about profit centers, to illustrate our point, we're going to adapt the basic principles of this assignment to writing a essay, an argumentative essay, to the object of your affection. And let's see what we come up with here. All right, so before we do anything else, let's just record the changes we're making with this assignment. So if you don't have a copy of the template already, you can go ahead and download it from this handy dandy link. And here I've written out the changes we're going to be making here because this is again Valentine's Day. So we're going to describe at least six sources of happiness common in the relationship, make an argument of explaining what and why these sources of happiness are the best to offer at a nice day restaurant, and we're going to defend our argument with sound reasoning based on dating practice, such as I've learned through this course and life experience. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pull out that template. Now, the very first thing we want to do is to update that title page, because this has very specifically told us that we need to have certain information here. The information is going to be that this is a university writing set and pull Abilene Christian University's name and then filling in the banner ID number here. So you can fill that in yourself. Let's go ahead and take a look at this paper. And we have our edited instructions here. And we're just going to italicize this first to differentiate it between the thing we're going to write 
And we're just going to take out this instruction here because we know we're writing an argumentative paper. So the first things to be putting in here are going to be our six sources of happiness. So let's list off whatever it's going to be. And you can put your own things here. <laughs> and whatever it is on your list, if you're making an argumentative essay for your um, own relationship, you may choose to have some humor in there. You may choose to have it be very matter of fact. Yeah, you know, relationships are many things to different people. Put in the things that you want. So in this case, I put in great kisser, carry heavy objects, very reliable, super fun to be around. Let's say... <laughs> your family loves me, and we need one more thing to make our list of at least six. Now, when you're brainstorming, you can come up with more here, but I'm going to be put, <laughs> putting here, we love reading the same books. So now we have this uh, explanation why these sources of happiness, or some set of them, are the best to offer at a nice date restaurant, or perhaps a date at that restaurant. So we want to defend our argument with sound reasoning here. Okay, well, let's look at how we might open this up, what we might do with these instructions. And it's helpful to type it in after this point here so we can see this is what we're responding to. So let's start as if this were a letter for our the sake of our argument. Uh, dear dearest, you can call them whatever you do. And in fact, you, you don't even need that. If you're doing the letter, you could include this, but let's make this full essay form. There, are, and it will, may sound a little bit uh, uh, arrogant, but let, let's just go with the form for the sake of the exercises. There are many reasons why we should be, be together. Now, this is one of those rare cases in APA style where we would be appropriate because you are talking about you and this other person. Now, you could write about them a little bit more uh, separately, more distinctly, if you were convincing someone else. But let's go with the we for now. There are many reasons why we should be together. The alternate would be to do something like, oh, there are many reasons why my girlfriend and I should be together. Now, in this case, this is the noun phrase that we, the pronoun, replaces. So functionally, it's the same thing. We're identifying who this is referring to. The benefit of my girlfriend and I is that it's more specific than just we. We could, Is that two people? Is that 10? Is that 25? Hopefully not 25. That would be way too much dating. Okay, there are many reasons why my girlfriend and I should be together. For example, then you can just list these things out. This is our introduction, so we can always expand them, but now we're giving the short version to support my thesis statement that there are many reasons why my girlfriend and I should be together. Now, you'll remember that the instructions talked about different sentence length. And so here, we have a list of two things together. Now, by itself, for example, I'm a great kisser, which she loves, and I carry heavy objects for her. By itself, yes, we can include these together. They are both examples. But in even better order would be to have a clear rationale for holding them together, rather than just being examples. So if we move this here, and we had, for example, I'm a great kisser and I carry heavy objects for her, both of which she loves. Ah, now we have a reason for them being together. We're listing some things that she loves together. I'm also very reliable. <laughs> now, if we're naming characteristics of me, then I can look at this and say, oh, the next one on the list is also 
uh, characteristic, so a natural thing to group together. I'm also very reliable and super fun to be around. In addition, so this is telling him, uh, oh, and giving you yet more evidence, your family loves me. <laughs> we also love reading the, the same books. All right, so th this is looking at this, if this is our intro paragraph, we have, all right, there are many reasons, and I've given six reasons here. What else might we have? Well, the opening paragraph for an essay generally functions as an outline to give the reader a guide for what to expect. And if you have, have a much longer thing, like regular book chapter, then it might be an outline that you get in the second or third paragraph. But for a shorter one, and this is only uh, three to four pages, uh, you know, this is something where we probably want to have our outline here. Now, in this case, the list of reasons, if I expand on each of these reasons in a, a paragraph, well, that is essentially giving the outline here. So we're doing two things here. We're providing a preview, at, uh, and we're also giving evidence to directly support that statement. There are many reasons why we should be together. All right. <laughs> And now here's my summative thing, which will be a complementary statement and something that we will be making our argument to support throughout the paper. Therefore, we should go to have our Valentine's Day dinner at Powell City of Books in Portland, Oregon, because it lets us bring all these things together. For those of you who don't know Powell's, Powell City of Books is in the Pearl District in Portland, Oregon, and it is, I believe, still the largest independent bookstore in the United States. It has, last time I was there, a cafe and a restaurant. It has a rare book section. It has books in other languages, used and new, art, and many other things there. So looking at this, okay, so what would we do after this? Well, according to the outline we've given in here, uh, we have a couple things to develop. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> Let's go with this one. Now, I do not recommend making the exact argument that I'm going to be writing out here because I don't think it would work very well on your significant other. My purpose here is to explain, to explore, to illustrate the things we're talking about here. So let us go through first stating this as a topic sentence. And there may be some additional information that you're adding but we are following the order of the argument laid out in this list here. You can always move them around, but the goal is to have the outline match the order of presentation in the paper. Now, I mentioned that this is to illustrate a point, not necessarily because I think you should make this specific argument. All right. So the thesis statement here is, all of my past girlfriends agree that I'm a great kisser. Well, uh, that's probably not something on Valentine's Day that you want to be mentioning to your significant other, uh, bringing up these past ones. But as a illustration of the uh, argument, so if we go back to our types of rhetoric, we have a couple different statements that we could be making. Are we making our statement based on logic? on a statement of how we are, uh, how the world works, on emotions. Now, all of my past girlfriends agree that I am a great... That sounds like we're moving more in a direction of uh, just talking about how things are. Uh, but uh, let's see if we can make this better. And one of the important things about an argumentative essay is knowing what is appropriate for your uh, argument, what is going to be most convincing here. Now, let's just briefly pop back to the slide deck here. 
and we look and see, okay, the four types, we've got ethos, this is just how things are. Logos, reasoning. Pathos, found in emotion. Kairos, untimeliness. Hmm, let's tweak our argument so it's more clearly one of these. Now, ethos, again, is a statement about how things are. So let's make our argument here a ethos statement. Rather than starting with that, let's go with I am a great kisser. Now this is a statement about how things are, which is why it's an ethos statement. And now I can give some supporting evidence for that, and that can have some reasoning or some evidence, which all of my past girlfriends agree with. Now what you don't want to do when you're making an argument is to undermine it if you had something like, oh, except for Patty. Well, that, 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 that's not helping your case. Also, again, you probably don't want to be reminding your girlfriend of all the people you dated before because this is hopefully going to be a day about the two of you. So let's uh, not include that. All right. So, well, we want some evidence and argumentation from this. <laughs> Now, remember, uh, you want to be clear about who you're addressing, because here we've worded it referring to the girlfriend as my girlfriend. So you don't want to use you. So a common mistake in when people are writing an argumentative essay with someone particular in mind is they change the perspective and they start referring to them in second person perspective when we are talking about the girlfriend in third perspective the third person perspective right now. Uh, so in this case, um, say, okay, so, uh, what are we doing here? We're giving evidence. Oh, what's the reason to believe this ethos statement? Well, uh, oh, my girlfriend tells me every day. Now, we can make it even more clear by having a logical bridge that introduces it so we know that this is evidence. For example, my girlfriend tells me every day that she likes my kisses. In addition, when I go on vacation, Now, so the in addition says, oh, here's more evidence. <laughs> now, analysis gives us context. And again, be careful about what you use because maybe you don't want to get people thinking of things. But for our purposes here, this is if we say this is something that all of my past girlfriends have said to, to me as well. So this is giving some context to that analysis. Mm -hmm. Now, you could also, if you were referring to a source of information, you could cite that. Now, probably, the, unless something really weird is going on, there probably aren't people writing books about that. But you could, in some arguments, cite a personal communication. And... <laughs> Now, how do we back that up? Well, you can cite a personal communication. Now, the, the way that APA style deals with this is we say, oh, it's a personal communication, who it's from, and then the date. And in this case, we're going to cite the name, and it's going to be initial for their first name, and then the date. Now, you probably want something that's uh, relatively recent, although, uh, you know, again, be careful because this might not be making the most uh, important reminders for this day of all dates. So if this was personal communication February 13th, uh, maybe you don't want to be disclosing that you were talking to your ex, to your significant other here, just because it's might not be the message you want to be sending 
right now. Uh, so, let, what do we have here? We have our claim here in our topic sentence. We have evidence supporting that. We have more evidence supporting that. And then, oh, analysis. And then more evidence to support, to back up that analysis, that context there. <laughs> so, all right, well, let's wrap up this argument. And, uh... <laughs> Now, here, our, in our synthesizing statement, we're creating new information. We're saying, oh, well, this shows that I am reliable about that and consistently good at it, and that that should make anyone happy. Now, that is a statement. Uh, uh, this is talking about cause and effect. So this is this synthesis here is really logos, and it does involve feelings, but it's saying, oh, because of A, then B, so that rational approach. Now, we don't have time to do all six here, which would defeat the point. So I'll say, if you go through here, and you go, you have one paragraph about each of these points here, and we want to make sure it uh, comes back to this here, which is something people often forget. You could tie it all together in the conclusion paragraph at the end, but it's even better if we have that as part of our argument throughout. And let's pick a restaurant here. Let's say you are picking, um, all right, we're going to just pick a random uh, restaurant uh, at La Piñata in San Diego, California. So this functions both as our conclusion and as our transition to the next part of the argument. It's saying, okay, well... <laughs> I'm an authority on kisses, so therefore we should do this there. All right, we'll do one more paragraph and then we'll wrap things up here. All right, so the next thing on our list is carrying heavy objects. Okay. All right, so remember our argument here is why we should uh, be together. So we're making a claim, and you can see that it's expanding on the short version given here. So I, I carry heavy objects for her, both of which she loves. So here we've expanded it. Oh, she has a strong incentive. I carry object, heavy objects, and she has lots of stuff. <laughs> and even connect it back that she doesn't want to carry. Now, using contractions here, it's okay if you write it out when you're just free writing. But in general, in APA style, we don't want to be using contractions. It's just a little bit less formal when you use those contractions there. Uh, so, does not want to carry. Let's give some supporting examples. Oh, in fact, I met her when she was moving into her new apartment, and I offered to carry her stuff inside. Okay, so we have some evidence for that. <laughs> and let's just be clear that if the, there's an active connection, this did happen, which she gratefully accepted. All right, so now we have supporting evidence. <laughs> let's give some more evidence. Since that point, five years ago, So we're giving examples, shoes, dogs, parrots, and <laughs> let's just put in something funny here. Uh, let's
I have care boxes, shoes, dogs, parents, and a portable kennel with sex cats for her. Mm -hmm. All right, so if we look at this, again, when you're free writing, it's fine. But when you have a moment, when you're proofreading, go back and see, oh, I wrote a contraction there. Let me spell that out. So what do we have here? We have, this is a logical argument here. All right. Uh, evidence to support it. In fact, I met her when she was moving into her new apartment. I offered to do this, and she gratefully accepted that. So this is emphasizing the emotional aspect. And the, here we have a kind of a litany of evidence here. All right. Uh, and there's probably some timeliness there, because that's a lot of stuff to be moving when you're moving apartments. All right, we've got more, dis uh, some analysis. Okay, well, if that were to stop, what would happen? And, all right, some synthesis. Well, uh, <laughs> if we ever break up... <laughs> If we ever break up, she will also have to move out all her stuff from our shared apartment. Hmm. So this is taking that and applying it to a new thing. So we're synthesizing that. Um, but to go a step further, because you said, well, is that good or bad? Well, let's spell that out. And if you were really going to be citing that, you might have... Now, again, looking at the choices for evidence here, uh, if she's telling you that it would be too much of a pain to break up with you the day before Valentine's Day, we might not have the best news here. But that's a side effect. This aside from what we're doing here, because we're discussing how to do these things that uh, she wants. So now let's connect that back to that restaurant, because that is part of our thing. And so let's see what well, the So let's connect this back. Okay, since I know she does not want to go grocery shopping today and we do not have anything in the house to eat, she would love to <laughs> go and eat out at a restaurant. All right, so let's review our argument here. We have our topic sentence claim. We have supporting evidence, supporting evidence, analysis of that, some synthesis, some more evidence here. And then talking about how this brings us back, how this connects to our topic, which is another way of synthesizing to apply it. And so we see, oh, hey, I can carry those leftovers home for us. Now, these are just two sample paragraphs plus the introduction. 
out of what will be a larger thing. But you can see how the planning here of coming up with that list makes it very easy for us to write this argument here and to make use of these different styles of rhetoric and the no tears plan to structure a convincing argument about whatever it is we're writing about. Now in the actual assignment, you're of course talking about these different profit centers for different types of institutions, but the same idea appears and applies. Now you might be using different types of evidence. You probably won't be citing your girlfriend, but you might be citing an interview with someone or you might be citing a published source and that's fine. And But if you understand the ways that you're going to be making your argument, then you will have a much easier time deciding which pieces of evidence to include and what arguments to make in this particular time and place. All right. So to wrap up our special Valentine's Day edition of writing an argumentative essay, we've talked about how to use the four classic types of rhetoric. We've talked about the no tears plan for paragraph writing. We've talked about how to look at assignment instructions and come up with a plan for doing the things that it's asking you to do. And if you have any more questions, you are more than welcome to send us an email at onlinewritingcenter.acu.edu. To schedule an appointment, just go to my.acu.edu and under that resources tab, select Online Writing Center and follow the instructions. And you can visit the Online Writing Center website for more information. That's it. Happy Valentine's Day, all.